Ever served rabbit at a dinner party? It can be exceptional, so, but watch on to see how narrow is the line between success with such a feast and abject failure. This week's episode has an Italian theme. We're going to start out with a gambetti all'ros marino, or shrimp with pancetta and rosemary. With that, we'll have a pane siciliano. Now, like many of the breads that I bake, this one is from The Bread Baker's Apprentice by Peter Reinhardt. Reinhardt says this is one of his absolute favorite breads. Mine too, though I do love the baguettes from his book. Now, with the appetizer, we're going to be serving Prosecco which is a, a sparkling wine. For our starter, we're going to have a Tuscan kale salad. Raw kale does not pair well with most wines, but coconut water tastes pretty good, so we're gonna go with that this week. For our main course, we're having casserole roasted rabbit with herbs. Most of us in the States have had the two types of meat on the left, and a few have even tried lamb, but not rabbit. And rabbit is, in my view, as tasty as the best examples of the others. On the side, we're going to have risotto con parmigiano reggiano. More bread with that, and for our wine, an Italian Barolo. Barolo is a firm, luscious wine, which hints at berries, fruit, dried herbs, even licorice. It'll go well with the rabbit. We'll be having a simple dessert with this. Mascarpone cream and raspberry coulis, along with coffee and tea. For our digestif, we're going to have something special. Homemade limoncello. 80 days in the making. Now my guests have the option of drinking it straight or, as I like to do, add a little bit of heavy cream. In Bourbon Dinner's first two episodes, I started by making pate fermenté, the pre-ferment dough for my bread. We're starting out the same way today, but we'll fast forward through it this time. All right, now we're going to turn to the raspberry coulis, and this has uh, only four ingredients. It has the raspberries, of course, it has water, and it has sugar, and the kirsch. So what we're gonna do first is heat over medium heat the sugar and the water, and we're just gonna dissolve that sugar into the water. It's a little after 2.30, and that was one of our guests. They've been debating whether the dinner starts at 2 or 5 tomorrow. I've been planning on a 5 o'clock event, and my calendar and the invitation say it's at 2. I don't know what I was thinking. It's a good thing they called, or I wouldn't have had anything ready for dinner. Oops. All right, the sugar syrup water has melted down nicely, so we're going to put it in the blender. And then we're going to put a pound and a half of raspberries into it. We're going to puree this. So what we want to do now is strain it. And I've got a very fine strainer. Oh, forgot to put the kirsch in. Mix that a little bit more. The kirsch is a cherry brandy. I think this is going to need a little bit of help getting through the strainer with all the seeds. What we're going to do after I've, I'm done straining this is let it cool and then we'll put it in the refrigerator and then I'll go over the mascarpone cream tomorrow. So we'll let that finish straining. We're going to turn now to the mascarpone cream and this has four ingredients. It has uh, the mascarpone, confection sugar, heavy cream, and vanilla. And what we're going to do is whisk these together until they're smooth. 
and then just refrigerate them until they're warm. Now you can see this is uh, very smooth, kind of fluffy. And we're going to put this back in the bowl. Cover this, put it in the fridge until tomorrow. The pate fermenté has been sitting uh, at room temperature for about two hours. And what we're going to do now is transfer it into the mixing bowl with the other ingredients for the Sicilian bread. And those other ingredients include bread flour, semolina flour, yeast, salt, olive oil, and honey. The semolina flour and the honey give this bread a very nice, sweet, and kind of nutty flavor. And we're going to start by mixing this all together and forming a rough ball. going to add a cup and a quarter of water. We have a cup and a half in here, but we're going to reserve some of it. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to use your hands for this. All right, we're going to need this at a medium low speed for about eight minutes. Check temperature. This should be between 77 and 81 or so, and it is at 81. We're going to scrape the bread into there. Now you can see that it's uh, kind of tacky. I, I wouldn't call it sticky, but uh, you could. Roll this around in here a little bit. I get coated with dough on all sides. And I'm going to cover this and we'll let it ferment at room temperature for two hours. All right, the bread dough has now risen and it is uh, it's eight o'clock at night on uh, Saturday, the night before the dinner party. And it's uh, pretty dark. Google, family room lights. Yeah, I'll get right on that. I live to turn on your lousy lights. Okay, so we're going to very gently empty out this bowl and put the dough on the countertop here. What we're going to do here is divide this dough up into three parts and we're going to make batards out of it, which is the preliminary shape to baguettes. Then we'll form it into baguettes and then form the distinctive shape for the Sicilian bread. Now for the batards, we're going to fold this like an envelope. So we're going to fold a third of it to the center and we're going to use our hands to crimp it down. Then we're going to fold the another third from the other side and do the same thing. And what we're trying to do here is increase the surface tension. I've lightly oiled couple pieces of plastic. We're going to cover the batards and let them rest for five minutes. This will let the gluten relax. What we're going to do is stretch these out a little bit, about two feet long. And then to create the surface tension, we're going to crease in the middle roll it in toward itself 
and crimp it with our hand. All right, this is where the shaping of the Sicilian bread is different from the French baguettes. We're going to start rolling these towards the center in opposite directions. So we're forming, you know, it looks kind of like a, uh, a treble clef, and then we're going to put these on a baking sheet. And I've uh, sprayed a little bit of oil on the baking sheet and sprinkled semolina flour on it. Now we're going to spritz it with a little bit of water and sprinkle sesame seeds on the, the dough. Finally, we're going to spray a little bit of oil on it. Now tomorrow is going to be an early day. I narrowly avoided throwing a no food bourbon dinner by correcting the dinner schedule. But eating at 2 means I'll have to start cooking at 0 dark 30. Ah well, there's always one near debacle. Google, I'm going upstairs now. Oh great, don't worry about me. Go upstairs. Just go.